Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back to another Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Uh, but I can assure you this is certainly not going to be uh, 30 minutes. Okay, so uh, continuing our little mini series on um, VMware vSphere hypervisor, uh, which I've, if you've been following in the last couple of videos that we've done in this series, uh, I showed you how to install uh, Linux Ubuntu 24.04.1 LTS desktop on VMware Workstation Pro 17.6. And in part two, in the second video, uh, I showed you how to install Linux Fedora 41 desktop on VMware Workstation Pro 17.6. Um, and as I promised at the start of this mini series, uh, I did say um, that I've been looking at um, searches across the channel uh, and looking at uh, feedback and comments uh, where people have been asking um, how to install various versions of Linux. Uh, they didn't specifically say which versions of Linux, so I've picked, um, I think, uh, the common ones, uh, Ubuntu, Linux, and in today's video, in today's short video, I'm going to show you how to install uh, CentOS Stream. But if there is a version of Linux that you want me to cover in these videos, then please just drop a uh, comment uh, in the video and we'll get that sorted for you and in the meantime don't forget to thumbs up uh, if you don't like these video then thumbs down and more importantly uh, don't forget to subscribe and today i'm wearing my experts exchange uh, core conference 2023 uh, t-shirt uh, and to be honest i i really really like this t-shirt um i i love it a lot i think it just um shows the uh, the core conference logo and experts exchange um at its best um so without further ado uh, let's get into installing centos stream um on vmware workstation pro 17.6 okay so i've just connected back to my uh vmware workstation pro desktop um using rdp uh, microsoft remote desktop connection or remote desktop protocol uh, whichever you refer to it as and you can see that i've already got the uh, existing virtual machines they're still running ubuntu 2404 lts uh, that we did in part one and fedora linux 41 that we did in part two so today we're going to cover centos stream so file new if you've not been watching these videos and I'm going to do a typical recommended installation. Um, I'm going to, um, I will install the operating system later. I'm not going to use the easy installation method because that doesn't appear to work. So I'm going to pick um, the guest operating system is Linux. And we're going to have a little look to see whether or not that we can see an option here that says CentOS. And... Um, I think we're probably safe that I think, um, there we go. So we've got CentOS 8, 64-bit. Uh, so we can select that, followed by next. Um, and again, I'm going to select my D drive, which is an NVMe uh, 4 terabyte. Uh, I'm going to select uh, the VMs because I want to basically keep them all together. And I'm just basically going to cut and paste that. Um, I'm going to get rid of the, I'm just going to call it CentOS. I'm going to call it CentOS there, uh, followed by next. Again, as I've mentioned before, um, if you use a single disk, single file, a 20 gig single file, then you can going to get a little bit more performance rather than if you're splitting disks. I don't really think that there's any need to split disk anymore into multiple files. I think that it was... I think many years ago, and you know, VMware Workstation has been around for about 26 years, and I think it, when it was first developed, um, there was a size limit um, on USB removable disks. Um, I think it might have been two terabyte, possibly. Uh, but there was a size limit on uh, removable disks, I think, or a file limit. I think on on disks so i think the 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 idea being that by being split into multiple files 
um, then it was easier to make them sort of kind of portable if you were copying them from um, workstation to workstation. But we're not going to do that here. And uh, I'd rather store it as a single virtual disk, as a single file than lots of multiples and get a little bit more performance out of the virtual machine. So followed by next, I'm going to customize the hardware because I'm now going to drop in. Uh, apologies, I've got a very itchy nose. I don't know why that is. Um, I'm going to drop the CentOS stream uh, ISO uh, and I'm going to click close and I'm going to click finish. Um, one of the things I'm probably going to do as well, I'm just going to change. I, I'm not really happy that uh, that says that we only need a gig. So I'm going to change that to four gig. Uh, and again, I'm going to change the processors. Um, I'm going to basically up that to uh, two processors, two cores. So one processor, two cores. And I'm going to click OK. So I'm happy with that four gig and uh, I'm going to power on the virtual machine uh, and agree ignore that warming about side channel mitigation, uh, which is a, um, a security issue. And hopefully we will start to boot the uh, CentOS. OK, so I'm going to I've just clicked the um, focus there, I just click the VM to get the focus to transfer the mouse and you do control and alt to get it back so that's on the host if i click in there it disappears and now i've actually basically got a uh, control in there so i'm going to say install centos stream 10 and uh, i'm going to let that well now just on that note um again i have seen uh, some comments um where people basically have turned around and said that they've done all this uh and they get um uh, cannot find the operating system or cannot boot or something or other uh, what have I done wrong and I think probably what you've actually done wrong is that one the um, one the actual media that you're using the ISO file that you're using is uh, not bootable uh, or it's corrupt um, or quite simply you've just uh, forgotten to basically insert it into the CD-ROM drive uh, and you may have also forgotten basically the tick little box that says connect at power on uh, so effectively, you, you've not really inserted that ISO or CD-ROM actually basically into the machine. Um, anyway, I'm going to wet my whistle here. Um, got my beverage of choice. I've got triple espresso here to last me the day. Oh, that's a bit hotter than normal. Uh, I do like the coffee to start getting a little bit colder before I drink it. Because I haven't got this best off mouth. Um, okay. Um, we're getting there getting there slowly um there's certainly the centos stream uh, installer uh is a little bit slower uh than the previous um versions that we've seen um okay so i'm gonna bob off uh and i'm gonna wait for the installer to appear okay i'm back it didn't take that long after all uh, it is possible um it shouldn't be because this machine is um certainly got a lot of cpu cores um it's got 32 gig of memory so shouldn't really be struggling um but i am beginning to wonder with these other two virtual machines whether or not that it is uh, okay so welcome to centos stream 10 um so again um similar to fedora i'm going to select english and english united kingdom followed by continue uh, so my keyboard's English UK, British time and date Europe, installation, automatic partitioning selected. So um, I'm going to enable the root account and I'm going to specify a root password. I know that some people would probably normally frown upon this. Don't enable the root of the uh, server, but this is only this is only a lab. Uh, this isn't production. Uh, I'm going to create a a user account so i'm going to create my uh, normal i'm going to specify a password and that's done so root account is set it's going to create a password um have a little look and select our disk 
no disk selected we saw this before automatic drive selected done okay so i'm now going to click begin installation and that's it that's all there is to it uh and we'll let that tick in the background and download some packages and do some installation well i just mentioned the the vmware vexpert program again uh if you write blogs create videos um do podcasts um any of the above um if you are big in the vmware community uh, you moderate forums you write articles on linkedin uh, create videos for youtube create podcasts for youtube or spotify um, if you support the vmware community in any way um, and you've not applied um, for the vmware vexpert program because you missed the application date which closed at the end oh no sorry it closed eventually in january 24th i think um anyway if you missed the cutoff date and you would like to become a v expert a vmware v expert and you already have a portfolio of information that you think could give you credit to apply to the program then please contact me below um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, you can post a comment down below and, uh, and I'll reach out to you um, because there are mechanisms um, that we may be able to get you into the program um, rather than waiting to the next uh, application round. Um, that's my um, 10.30 try hack me streak alarm to remind me to do uh try hack me um but we'll talk about that later anyway so as i was saying if you would like to become a vmware v expert and you already have a portfolio of information that we can actually consider then please reach out and contact me that's all i'm going to say um so we're still downloading packages and we're still installing here um so i'm going to as i usually do i'm going to bob off i'm going to drink my um my pepsi max uh, my soft drink of choice and i'm going to carry on drinking my espresso and uh, we will speed all this up in post and uh, and then i'll uh, i'll come back and uh, summarize so uh, i'll catch you on the flip side in a minute okay bye bye for the moment I'm glad that's finished because I was getting somewhat bored here and thinking to myself, God, we're 27 minutes in and this is taking ages. Um, it seemed to, I think it downloaded a lot of the updates um, for that distro that I've got on the ISO, which I'm surprised because I actually downloaded it fresh. So I didn't think it was going to take that long, but it did. Um, anyway, so benefit for you watching this you don't have to watch all that or go through that because i'll speed all that what is almost 20 minutes worth of um, installation um, up anyway so finally all there is for us to do uh, was to click reboot and um, i was actually basically um doing a little bit of googling on my phone um because i've got a couple more of these um i'll just put them into shot there we go um this is a 
Raspberry Pi cooler. Uh, and this is specifically for um, the Raspberry Pi um, compute module five. I'm not quite sure whether or not you'll be able to see that. And that's what I was actually basically looking for uh, in thinking, maybe I need to get a visualizer so that um, I can put these on my desk and uh, you can see them a little bit more uh, clearly. Um, yeah, this is a Raspberry Pi compute module four um for further experimentations with our compute blades um and our turing rk1s um i was actually basically just going to turn around over here uh i shouldn't do because the microphone's there and if i turn around um but anyway so i've got some turing rk1s now that i'm experimenting with in the lab uh, the turing rk1s are arm 3588 socks um and therefore the turing pi and uh, i have a couple of turing pies here in the lab uh, and i also have a couple of compute blades as well um that use uh, compute module 4 and compute module 5. um uh, sadly at the moment uh i shall i should try again i'm just logging in there if you didn't spot that um i'll have to try again um but interestingly, my first um, tests in trying to get ESXi 8 on the CM5 um, didn't end well at all. Uh, the CM5 at the moment is slightly different than the Raspberry Pi 5 um, as it's a SOC. Uh, so it doesn't use the same code, we'll say. And um, we are waiting for the uh the open source ufe on github to be uh, to be updated uh so welcome uh i don't really want to take the tour um but here we go we're logged in to uh, centos so we're going to do a sudo dnf update and uh, we will see whether or not that there are any packages for it to update or did it actually basically do them as part of the of the installation yeah nothing to do so as i suspected um quite cleverly uh it did actually basically complete all the updates uh, for uh, critical and security updates as part of the installation so that's it uh, in part three uh, we've covered how do we install or how to install CentOS 10 Stream um, on VMware Workstation 17.6. And I was just actually basically having a look at my phone at the searches against the channel, and there was another one uh, that popped up, which was Cali. Um, so we'll do that one as well, and we'll call that quits at that, unless anybody else has got any suggestions and puts any comments. Um, we'll do one more in part four how to install Cali um on vmware workstation pro 17.6 and kali is specifically used really to support like hack the box uh, try hack me uh, but basically it's a linux distro um of um let's say penetration tools although that sounds rather weird um and it reminds me really of a friend actually basically telling me um that uh, certainly in the uk if teenagers were found with a linux laptop they were considered to be hackers anyway i'm going to end with that um uh, so once again uh, thanks so much for watching uh, hancock's vmware half hour um if you've liked this video then please thumbs up if you don't like this video then please thumbs down but whatever you do please don't forget to subscribe to subscribe um for more content coming soon where we look at um cm5 cm4s compute blades um turing pi rk1s and of course not forgetting our friend vmware vsphere hypervisor as well that will also uh, will also chuck in as well uh, so once again thanks so much for watching and uh, and goodbye from me bye bye now